Hello everyone. I'm glad to be here uh, with you. I'm. Um, it, it's nice to see so many people um, uh, having interest in this technology and uh, paying attention at this hour. Uh, I know for most of you is already the end of the day. However, we still have audience from United States uh, where it's uh, I think seven or eight a.m. So nice to see you to here. Uh, my name is. Um, Lucian Gruya, I'm based in Romania, uh, working as a software developer for about 10 years, mostly in telecom and fintech. Recently, about three years ago, I, uh, I joined um, uh, CN Group and Cyclum and uh, working for Flatiron Solutions, a company in aerospace industry uh, based in United States. Uh, I also uh, was passionate since I was uh, in, in my uh, university, I was passionate about uh, artificial intelligence technologies and started uh more more intensely two years ago to study this and um uh, also got some uh, got some certifications uh, meantime uh i am here to present to you today my experience with that and um the way i uh, i approached uh, learning and building applications uh, ai applications with java i did some um, some I did some mistakes in this time, and um, uh, if you are at the beginning, I would like to to share them with you and to uh, maybe help you uh, not doing same mistakes. Uh, if you are a bit more advanced, we can discuss more at the end of the of the presentation when I will also have uh, some some demos for the uh, for you some demos for the i will split my presentation in three parts the, um, uh, the first one would be regarding fundamentals and uh, um, even if you are a bit more advanced even if you are a bit more advanced uh, for you to uh, or maybe to review together it's, it's important for everyone to review together uh, these fundamentals because uh, this is the way i perceive the the learning path on artificial intelligence it's it's my perspective. I would like to to share that with you. And um, half of the presentation, about thirty minutes, will be uh, based on that. And then the, the other half will be based on uh, frameworks for Java. And I have also two demos: one with TensorFlow and the other with uh, Deep Learning for J. Okay, so we are here uh, today to discuss about artificial intelligence, mostly as a technology, but not about what do we see every day on um, on the on the market. Mostly, I want to discuss with you what's behind the scenes. I mean, what's the technology behind the artificial intelligence? And as a Java developer, I was wondering at the beginning, uh, two years ago, if we have options and what what options do we have as Java developers to to work with um, with artificial intelligence, right? So this is why I will focus mo mostly on um, Java oriented um, uh, frameworks or, and paradigms, but I'll also share with you some general knowledge I, uh, I learned about AI. Okay, just a very short intro. Uh, I would like to, uh, to share with you that there is this concept of AI and um, uh, it, it's also some some experts in in the domain uh, proposed the a to be replaced like or not not replaced but proposed an alternative uh, not to be used artificial intelligence and rather to use augmented intelligence for for that because um maybe it's artificial it's a bit more confusing and um uh, also a lot of people uh, are reluctant to to adopt this uh, these concepts in, in the market uh, however, I, I would like to emphasize that there are uh, multiple types of uh, of AI here, and of course, probably they are uh, some of them are intuitive for you. But as I explored these topics, I understood that most of the software engines we are building or applications we are building that are able to take decisions. If, if even if we are talking about an if else basic if if else clause, even them are uh, can be considered intelligent in in some way, in some limited way, of course. I have some uh, articles where where I explain more about uh, these types of, of AI. It's not the main purpose of the discussion, so I'll skip this uh, this part now. But I will give you uh, at the end of the presentation uh, some references where you can uh, you can read more about that. So let's take some uh, real life examples, and uh, I would like you maybe uh, if you can quickly unmute you here, uh, Raresh. Can you tell me what do you see here in in this picture? Uh, it's two, right? It's it's a number two. Okay, okay. Thank you. You, you can you can mute it back. <clears throat> okay, so it, it was quite easy for you, but uh, let's now think: How do we do that with software? I mean, what alternatives do we have? Of course, 
uh, there, there are multiple um, options to brute force that, right? To store all the po- po- possible uh, images uh, with number two and then possibilities you have to type number two. And for example, I also have prepared here some other examples. Some of them can be quite nicely, other can be quite ugly, but we are still able to do that as, as human agents, right? We, we are still able to, to do that quite easy. So in, in today's webinar, I would like to present you some alternatives and some techniques that we uh, we use currently to recognize images like this and, and even um, handwriting, right? Okay, so I can uh, give you like a spoiler from now. An approach to do that would be and it's it's an engineering approach. It's not like necessarily a programmatic one, but would be to split image in, in smaller parts and then to create uh, specialized entities, software entities that are um, analyzing smaller parts of the image. For example, we have this small part here, the bottom right corner, which has this tail and we can create only a, a small software entity that is analyzing this tail and and then decide if we have this tail we can consider that it may be a two if we do not have the tail we know for sure that it's not a two right and let's see how how we do that okay before doing that just want to emphasize another important thing these are uh, these things are not so new as um one may may uh, may think these are most of them are mathematical concepts that are explored in the past 70 years starting probably alan turing that at least that that's that was my my research on that uh, not sure it may be even um uh, started earlier than that but uh, definitely that's not something that uh, emerged in in the past decade or in the past two decades right so it, it's a bit uh, longer history than that Speaking of that, let's speak. Let's let's start with uh, with some fundamentals, right? So we have about twenty five minutes for that, and let me uh, try to not exceed that. So I'll schedule my my timer to twenty five minutes uh, on speaking on fundamentals of artificial intelligence. So I would like to speak today. I mean, of course, there are like hundreds of of, of concepts or important concepts, but I would like to emphasize and to present to you five of them maybe if we have time i can add another two so it will it will be about seven concepts that may help you if you are at the beginning to find a, a correct path to to try and start learning ai and then implement that with your preferred uh, programming language first of all i like i would like to discuss about intelligent agents right so we we as as a humans we, or any any software engine and uh, any uh, life being some sometimes uh, during the our lifetimes we need to take decisions uh, in ai it's a different um, it's, it's it's a different paradigm we use and you will uh, hear a lot about these intelligent agents because it's it's a change of of paradigm so in classic programming usually we have to do what to take some inputs and have some outputs and then decide on ourselves what would be the best algorithm we have or we can we can produce in order to produce an expected output right but in in ai usually the terminology is different and also the paradigm is different so in order to to build an, an ai application we have to think on on different purposes the the paradigm is that we don't have to find on ourselves the algorithm but having a software program that it's uh, deciding what is the best algorithm or what would be a better algorithm. Uh, this is actually our our purpose. So it's different than than in in the classic programming that we don't have to decide on ourselves and to generate outputs. We just have to uh, find ways to find to to discover or to create algorithms or to generate algorithms. Right. So these intelligent agents are abstract uh, concepts that are applying even to humans so ourselves we, we are like human agents and um, they can be classified like human and robotic and software agents but today i will be discussing only about software agents so they can be for example simple reflex agents which are those i mentioned earlier and if it's else close it's a really simple reflex agent that is taking a decision and it, it is intelligent but i mean just really really limited 
On the other hand, we have different agents that have um, high intelligence, if, if I can say that, but be, uh, please be careful when you compare this level of intelligences, because there is also a possibility that creating intelligence, it's, it's also coming with creating like artificial stupidity, right? We will see about that a bit later about my demos, if they are intelligent actually, or maybe more stupid. Okay, let's dive into core concepts of AI. So first of uh, them, yeah, would be problem solving and searching. So as I mentioned earlier, in AI, when we try to create a software, when we try to create an, an application, we are more interested in how we identify the easier or the, the, the most convenient path in order to reach from an initial state to an output, right? So these are intermediary steps that an algorithm should navigate through. And it's like in real life. Every day we have to take decision and each decision we, we take it's influencing for a future decision that we will do, right? So we can even uh, loop through some of these steps, let's say looping looping through S1, S6, S4, S2 infinitely, or not maybe for a long time, and then uh, going to the, the, the latest, the, the going to the output, or we can just go directly from the initial state to, to the output without losing so many res resources, right? But in real life, we don't know what decision to take uh, and how to navigate through this enormous, to this infinite graph we have, the graph of our lives, right? That's the case also with software. So we just have to find good ways and the paradigm in uh, software programming for AI application is to design some algorithm that is, that is generating other algorithms that, that are finding or sort some techniques that are finding more convenient ways to to navigate through these uh, through these graphs right so this is searching it's not like it, it's a different concept it's not like searching through a, a string into a text it's it's searching actually for a path into a graph of possibilities and decisions okay the next concept i want to introduce is knowledge representation and actually just knowledge so in classic programming you know all of you probably know we have uh, what is called data or information but here the difference is that we have this concept of knowledge which are which are also some uh, some data but uh, in most cases we are generating further knowledge based on previous knowledge which is which is not necessarily the case in in classic programming when we are interacting um with data and we, we do some maybe some analytics on, on them and, and that's it, right? So I, here I presented uh, the architecture of a knowledge-based agent. So as I said, there are multiple types of intelligent agents and this is a knowledge-based agent. This, this type of agent uh, has its, its purpose to generate or to infer and learn uh, knowledge and, uh, and grow the, the knowledge base, right? So instead of database here, we have knowledge base. Okay, and I think this is a good moment um, to make a small uh, step back and uh, let you and yeah, recommend you some uh, documentation into that. So there are like many aspects to discuss about these concepts, but if you want to explore more, I prepared here some articles. I was uh, working on them in the in past years, so you can read more about problem solving and searching and knowledge representation. For example, I, I also prepared like schemas and techniques for that. And uh, I did quite a lot of research on that. Unfortunately, we don't have time to discuss about uh, all of this during this session. But uh, if you want to take that separately, I will, I'll uh, be gladly uh, do that with you. Or you can just take the, the articles and, and read them and uh, let me know what's your feedback on that. So let me go further with planning. Okay. And here, just want to uh, mention one thing. So if we are stepping back again to, to the graph representation of the decision we have to do, uh, it's important to emphasize that sometimes uh, we are at the risk to take uh, bad decisions and other times we are at the risk to create loops, even in our lives, right? We, we don't know if that decision, the very... Um, the, the decision I'm taking in, in this very moment will and how will influence that 
uh, my further life, right? But fortunately, in AI, there are some techniques, uh, for example, um, a tautology and contradiction. There are some logic techniques that that are helping us to prevent having some really basic mistakes. And we don't have to think so much about them because most of these techniques are already developed uh, before by not, not smarter people, but let's say more people with, um, uh, with more interest into that. And uh, they invested a lot of time, like mathematicians or uh, even, even other computer scientists. So from my experience, uh, I, I just um, learned, uh, learned them and tried to explore them. But in programming, in, in, in building applications, I didn't use them so deeply. I just take them for granted using some, uh, some frameworks or using some libraries. And, uh, and that, that was it. Okay, let's go further and uh, mentioning about reasoning and probabilistic thinking. Okay, so when we create an AI application, it's important to uh, take into account that every potential decision we, we will take further. I mean, that, that's the case even in, in, the, in, the, um, in the classical software, right? But uh, in programming, we will in uh, AI programming, we will have a lot of documentation and we have a lot of frameworks that are based on probabilistic thinking. And that's also uh, like a homework for us as developers to understand how probabilistic thinking is working and how reasoning is working on one hand. And on the other hand, uh, we have to know how to use the, the frameworks and what's the, the best library to use um, in order to take some, some uh, further decision or to optimize the implementation of a specific library in uh, uh, in our application. So even if I'm discussing now uh, core concepts of artificial intelligence, I'm still a programmer and I'm still presenting to you as uh, Java uh, developers or, or programmers. And then uh, we have to be oriented on that. I mean, how what's the what's the best approach I can take to understand these concepts, not to spend too much time on them, and then find the, the best libraries we can use in order to generate our, um, our or, or to in order to, to build our applications, right? And this is actually what, what we are used with, uh, even in classical programming. So that's the case in, uh, in AI away, uh, uh, as well. And fortunately, there are plenty of um, of libraries that are using that all we have to do is to understand like the basic concepts one important um, concept i i want to discuss about is feature selection and dimensionality and that's because in the demo i will come back to this and um, uh, we'll we'll try to explain how to use how we use their the the feature selection and what is that okay so First of all, we have actually two types of dimensionality reduction. One of them is extraction of the feature and the other is selection of the feature, right? So extraction means that we take some data uh, from, a, from a bunch of input data and transform that into, into numerical uh, feature. And selection means that we are trying to reduce to only to uh, filter a part of, uh, of the inputs and then um, use them further. Right. The difference is that extracting it's it's still keeping the data, and while while uh, selection it's um, uh, going a step further and uh, losing some some input data. But it's in some cases it's it's a bit more um, uh, effective. And I would like maybe to explain dimensionality reduction. So I'm I'm thinking when I at the beginning it, it was like just a buzzword for me, but then uh, I realized that. They, it has some correspondence in classic programming. So let's let's uh, think about object oriented uh, object oriented programming, and about dimensionality reduction. In object oriented programming, we have the concept of classes, right? And we can instantiate that class and create objects, and those objects has have attributes, right? So that's the dimension of of an object, the the number of attributes it has, and Maybe also the number of uh, of uh, methods of functions we we can implement on on that, right? So, in AI, dimensionality means the number of characteristics um, an object can have and how 
in order to focus on something for example i'm trying to focus on on the screen now i see like a lot a lot of other things but i'm i'm reducing uh, part of them just for the um, having a um, easier analysis in in my brain so also important to do in uh, for for machines as well probably most of you if you are experienced with even with classic programming uh, it's quite easy to to understand it's it's just a small difference of paradigm here okay and i i also uh, listed here some uh, some techniques which um, I would also invite you to read further on the articles I presented. I will uh, share with you the URLs, uh, maybe through Irina or uh, yeah, somehow at the end of the meeting. But um, I also presented them there. And uh, of course, again, if if you want to have a separate discussions about that, let's uh, let's take that separately. I'm uh, I'm I, I'll be glad to have like separate uh, meetings on debating this uh, this stuff. Uh, and the last two concepts, and I have seven more minutes on that. Uh, okay, the last two concepts I want to introduce are classification and clustering here. So these are two techniques that we also use in classic programming, but they are really important in, in AI because based on that, we generate a, lo a lot of algorithms. I mean, what I like to, I would like to emphasize here, it's the labeling way of thinking. I mean, on a single object, or actually a single object, we don't have to assign it to a specific group, but rather we can uh, keep it there and uh, assign multiple labels to, to that group and then uh, think of that group by filtering these, these labels. And I'm sure probably uh, you're familiar with the concept of labeling. In, in AI, here are some uh, frameworks and some uh, techniques that where we are using multiple labels and even in my first demo i will uh, explain you better how i implemented um, an image recognition system using a using a labeling algorithm so in in contrast with with classification uh, clustering means that we can separate this uh, data into uh, into some um, some groups based on similarities and in the second demo i will uh, also uh, emphasize what similar means and uh, probably intuitively, maybe we can say that it's about having some thresholds, having some um, some outputs of some functions that are prob uh, probabilistic uh, thinking-based functions. I hope uh, it was not too boring, but I just wanted to mention all of these because at the beginning, when I started uh, studying these frameworks, I thought that it's it's like just implementing um, just just using another library okay let's see let's take from uh, some code from stack overflow let's read some documentation uh, here and there and then let's let's implement that but i discovered actually it's, it's not the same because they there were not only some buzzwords there it was more than that so i had to go back to documentation and take some classes and um, have some certification programs in order to understand better these concepts and then to be able to further work with this as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I would like to present some uh, options we have as Java developers. I know that uh, here may be uh, some uh, JavaScript developers or, or maybe some Python developers that will be uh, skeptical so on. Okay, what can you do with Java in terms of AI? We can do better with Python. We can do better with uh, something else and so on. Yeah, so I, I'm sure there are alternatives for uh, each programming language. Not sure exactly which one is better or not, but I can I can share with you my experience with Java, and I can say that uh, there are like plenty of um, of alternatives and tools we can uh, we can use to build applications with that. And I try to group them uh, based on uh, the utilities they have. So for neural networks, we have two libraries, and uh, the second of them is uh, Deep Learning 4J, which I will use uh, in my second demo today in order to recognize some uh, some images as well there. NLP, uh, so there are also some uh, uh, some good alternatives. I think there are more than that, but I just listed those that I explored. And uh, mostly I worked with uh, this standard core NLP library, which um, you can use even to... to to detect like the mood uh, within within a text, and it's quite nicely. Uh, it's, it's quite easy to use. I can recommend you, and it's really well documented. 
maybe uh, I can also mention that NLP stands, I mean, there are two concepts, you know, it's neuro-linguistic programming, and please do not confuse that with uh, natural language processing. So these uh, NLP frameworks are about natural language processing, of course. So recognizing a text, understanding a text, recognizing like sentiments in, within a text, and so on. That's about a natural language processing. For machine learning now, and um, maybe uh, some of you will, will ask, okay, what is machine learning? What's the difference between machine learning and deep learning? Or what's the difference between AI and machine learning? So uh, I can say that machine learning is a, like you, you can think of machine learning as a subset of artificial intelligence, while deep learning is a subset of machine learning. Okay, so for machine learning, we have these frameworks here. And uh, I think maybe I can recommend you starting with Weka, which is, which is um, a data mining, a, a really strong data mining tool, even if the interface is not not so like fresh and modern, but uh, it, it has some good documentation, uh, good integration with Java, and you will also have, uh, find a lot of uh, information or a lot of documentation uh, through the internet about uh, about Weka. It's, quite a large community. I think Java ML uh, is also a good alternative. Okay, uh, genetic algorithms now, and I would like to explain genetic algorithms uh, are about solving, is about solving problems that comes with um, testing multiple or evolutionary testing some, uh, some, some use cases or, or some possibilities. And let me take you, uh, give you an example. If we want to determine what's the best layout we can have for a keyboard, for example, right? So nowadays we are using all of us this QWERTY layout, which is, I think, 150 years uh, old. So um, maybe it's not so optimized, but if we want to, uh, if we want to determine what would be a better one, what options do we have? So we can we can try testing, just typing some words and testing what's the distance between uh, our our fingers when we type these words, right? So, okay, but how how do we do that? Because we have a, a lot of uh, variables here. So, for example, we have to test maybe for what lang what language for uh, for English. Okay, well, what about French? What about something that that's not a latin uh, that's not using a latin alphabet so in order to do that we need to try some possibilities i mean we can also brute force that but uh, it, it will be most uh, optimal to uh, more optimal to try some possibilities and then if based on uh, prior steps we can eliminate some layouts that we know for sure that they will not work so this, these are evolutionary uh, type of problems, and for the, for them, we are using genetic algorithms. And uh, I think for for this one, uh, I I uh, I tried this some POC with Watchmaker, and uh, also with um, now actually, I, I can recommend you to start with with Watchmaker. The others just tried um, to do some examples with them. Uh, not so familiar with them. Of course, there are some also specialized frameworks you can use. And for example, I use this Opta Planner in order to create some school tabling. And you know, probably school tabling, it's quite complex uh, problem. Uh, when you have, let, let's say, a new university and uh, multiple rooms to handle, even, even in a company, right? You, you have the some rooms to share with some colleagues, especially now after COVID, if, if we want to use shared desk, uh, desk, for example, right? So Opta Planner, it's it's quite good with constraint solvers, and it's also providing uh, a lot of community and, and documentation. So yeah, I think my time expired for this part, 25 minutes, as I promised. But I also think I, I finished exactly in time. Okay, don't worry about, uh, I mean, I also added URLs here on all of these. Uh, don't worry if you didn't have uh, time to catch up with uh, all I wrote here, but we will send uh, to you later the presentation as well. So you can you can check on yourselves. And in case you have questions, especially about Deep Learning 4J, Stanford Core NLP, Weka, then Watchmaker or Opta Planner, please uh, let me know. Uh, we can discuss further about that. Uh, yeah. Okay. And... Let's continue with uh, the last part, with the second part of um, 
of today's presentation. I I, I hope uh, it was not too boring for you. But uh, until now, but I think if I would switch directly to to these demos, maybe some of some of um, some of the concepts um, will be maybe too new or two more concepts, and it, it will be more difficult to to digest. So if you want now we can take like a two minutes break in case if you have like short questions you can unmute yourselves here and uh, just or just raise your hand and address them otherwise i can proceed with uh, with the demos okay please trust me it's not so easy to discuss uh, to to speak like 30 minutes <laughs> on on a screen on that so um uh, not sure what's your mood now i hope you are still following me here yeah, I see we, we have a lot of attendees, so they are still here. Okay, let's switch to the next part, which is a bit more interesting, I guess. Okay, so the first demo, I will start also with a theoretical concept of, of the tensor. Okay, so tensor, okay, tensor flow comes from, uh, uses uh, in its name, this concept of tensor, which is a mathematical concept, actually. Uh, it, it's not like purely software concept. I think you can think of a tensor like like a, of a matrix, but the difference is that a tensor has multiple dimensions, or it, it's actually on mathematical objects that can have multiple dimensions or not, right? So a tensor, if it has no dimensions or only one, actually, it has a rank zero, right? And we know that we call it a scalar, right? So five, it's it can be also a tensor, a rank zero tensor, which is a scalar. They have dimensions and uh, they also have a uh, size, right? So let's take, uh, let's go to this example, a rank two shape three, three. It's like in real life, it's a matrix of three arrays of three uh, elements, uh, each of them, right? Rank one, uh, definitely it's a vector. If it has shape five, it has, uh, it's a vector with five elements, right? But tensors can have uh, like n, uh, n dimensions and uh, their shape can be, of course, uh, Unregulated, so you can think of that like like an extended concept of a matrix, if you want, if it's easier. Okay, so what's important to emphasize in TensorFlow, this framework tensor is like a primitive, right? So we can you can use it to store objects and to play with with them there and do like complex operations, like you know, just think about uh, if you want to add or to to do some operations with two metrics right so it will be more, more complicated if you don't have a special tool for that so in tensorflow we can do that and we can easily manipulate e images for example which are uh, actually uh, can be described as a as a map of bits right okay so first of all uh, before switching to code i know tensorflow it's not uh, Java first framework, but this is exactly the reason I wanted to present it uh, first and then to switch to a Java first um, framework. And that's because uh, TensorFlow is more oriented to uh, Python and JavaScript, but this doesn't mean that in Java or in any other programming language, we cannot use pre-built models generated uh, with uh, with TensorFlow or by the, Tensor, by the TensorFlow community. <laughs> It's important to keep in mind that TensorFlow community it's it's quite large. It's um and uh, it's okay. Let me remove this one. It's a quite large uh, community, and uh, we can find a lot of models. And sometimes you don't want to create. For example, now in in this uh, demo, we don't have time to create these models, right? But we have them models and variables. We have them from uh, from TensorFlow community. So based on them, they are trained uh, already trained networks or trained uh, generated models. And based on them, we can easily um, use to to recognize our uh, our image there. And I will come back now to my beautiful two here. Uh, we'll try to recognize recognize them at some point. Uh, okay. So let's see first. Let's uh, dive a bit into code. Um, We'll st we will start with uh, TensorFlow now, and then we'll switch to, uh, to the demo with uh, Deep Learning 4J. Okay, so first of all, um, you can go to, oops. Okay, you can go to this um, uh, this website. There, oops, there you will see that 
the API for Java, it's uh, currently uh, like deprecated, but they are working on, on a replacement. However, uh, there is like an API you can use. There are some uh, Maven uh, dependencies you can also use and, and also for Gradle, of course. Uh, I, I prefer in this case, uh, Maven. Um, and uh, what else you can do is just try to find uh, models on the internet or directly on uh, on, on TensorFlow website here. Okay, so what I did here, I took these two dependencies, added them in the POM XML file as usually. So I use TensorFlow core platform and TensorFlow framework for today's demo. And then we have here a list of labels. So what's important, why it's important to have this, uh, this uh, labels is because we will work on people on the street. Okay, we will work on this nice image, which has two persons here and, and, uh, and a bike and maybe some other persons behind the scenes here, some, some buildings, right? So we want to look on some label and, and filter only some labels. For example, we, we don't want to, I mean, at the end of the, the day, if you think deeply into that, every pixel here is an object, right? We don't want to recognize all of them. We don't. We want to recognize only some of them based on labels. So, so we took a model. Um, we we also take a list of of labels person and bicycle, and you can find some differences to understand better how I chose these, um, these labels. And there is, let me see, there is this common objects in context 27 library. So you can use that to, um, to find the right labels for you. And using them, you can, you can, uh, you, you can um, work on, uh, on your images. Okay, you can work on, on these images to recognize whatever you want, right? And then further, I mean, you can take even this POC. I will uh, I will leave you at the end uh, uh, the GitHub repo for that. But you can then link link it further with uh, with your REST API, which you can use to upload images and to uh, get responses to to write your files and then send back to the users. And based on that, you you just recognize uh, just recognize uh, your objects there. So. Uh, it, it's just a demo, it's just a simple program. It's not like perfectly optimized, but it's an example on how easy we can build an application based on TensorFlow models and using uh, TensorFlow API here. So uh, some important uh, libraries I have, I have used are like Graph, which is um, like the universe of, possibilities we have to take some decisions, right? Th these are graph and there in that graph, we are injecting our potential uh, uh, decisions and then we are navigating to them, right? There is a session. So here uh, using using the, the session, we are connecting to the graph and we are working with that using some uh, some techniques, using some methods, which we will uh, see uh, further. And tensor, of course, it's uh which i already described it's a plus for the handling tensors okay we also have a uh, shape we also have some other uh, some other uh, utils here like decoding and encoding um, uh, images uh, read and write files and so on and also some uh, some java utils as well Okay, so first of all, let me see. We put some uh, input, uh, some paths, I mean, some parameters for input and output images, and I added them here directly on um, on the arguments for this uh, for this application. So, people on the street will be the input image, and then people on the street out will be the output image for for our case. And we will try. What we'll try to achieve is just to see if we can mark and we can recognize the the persons here. And what's the level of um, confidence we can have on them, and if the software can recognize this or not, there, right? And we'll do some fine tuning for that. Uh, okay, 18 more minutes, I guess I have it now, right? Please uh, let me know if I'm uh, losing the, the time here. Okay, so what I 
did first is to take these uh, these labels and then okay navigate through them to see uh, what i'm going to use then spinning a a session against this this graph so we, we instantiate and create a, um, a graph here and then um we pass my first parameter i mean my my um my image to to an object like uh call I, I called it tensor uh okay then i'm reading the file right here and in I'm, and i'm going to use this later after of course uh taking some uh some info from uh from uh like the, the image uh by decoding the the jpeg so at the end here i will obtain this this image which is decoded i'm going to fetch it into a shape uh which is an object that has currently four dimensions right so we know that for for a uh for a object in, in reality we have like three dimensional um characteristics we have uh, height depth and uh width so here i added an, an extra dimension just to to uh to keep some some data about our uh our image then further we will go and uh okay maybe maybe okay we will go here to to the saved uh, model we have so this one the pb file uh, you you'll have to get familiar with with pb models um these are binaries i, I cannot open them and see them so uh we will work with this through uh through our library our tensorflow libraries and then we we are creating here like detection boxes which we'll use later to put on the images like uh create some borders on the on, on those images right then we have also the detection score and we have also like a sensitivity threshold here if it's higher than zero let's say zero three uh then that's the detection score accepted so we will add this uh, this box this box there right okay i'm drawing the box shape there uh let's see further okay further is what i'm doing is i'm writing the file of course and what's important to emphasize here it's maybe list of colors okay yeah these are like common java basic uh, aspects yeah i i think um i think yeah what's maybe important to mention is that we we can have the possibility to uh, to put like to to find and also the quality of the of the input uh of the input image here and then we are running this and uh writing to this file write file which come come back to to this part and let's see what's happening if i'm running this now uh let me check meanwhile the chat it will take about 30 seconds uh do i have any okay there is nothing yet okay so what we have here it's loading the the models right one okay thank you for turning on your cameras elena dimitro okay and we have the file generated here so yeah so what we have here is that we identify that we have these people in the images and also the the bike here and also we even detected the, them because the sensitivity the threshold was set to zero three so let me go back to uh to that part so what's happening here i mean it's like also in the real life you can see that there are people but uh you are not sure of that right but in real life you can say probably it is or maybe i have like 30 30 percent uh, uh 
confidence into that. That's the case here as well. Let's move this to 0 0.95, for example. Okay, let's take it 0 0.9. So going to rerun that. And meanwhile, I can uh, also try to take this nice two and test it as well. Okay, maybe take them all. <laughs> Let's see what's happening. But I reduce the, the detection uh, score there. Okay, let me prepare the, the path for that image. Oh, actually, I didn't test that before if it's overwriting, but it should, I think it should overwrite the file. Yeah, not sure. Okay, 15 more seconds, 10 more seconds on that. Let's see. So on the second run, we are quite confident that with 90% confidence that here is a, it's another another person. So yeah. I think we also tried that together, Irina. So we, we, we obtained that. Uh, I was not sure. But let's see what's happening now with my handwriting objects here. So we have... Just a second, we have this. Mm, I don't like this space here, so maybe let, let me remove that. Okay, and I'm going to use this as an output. And quickly, let's, let's run this and uh, I I think we are, I'm about, oops, what, what, what? I forgot maybe to add a space, what's happening here? Yeah, do not forget past parameters, I know I wrote that. Hmm. I think it's, okay. Maybe it doesn't recognize the... Nope. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know, I have another... Uh... Yeah, of course. It's another empty space. Why are these things always happen in demos? Keep wondering after 10 years, probably also do that. Yeah, better now. Two. Yeah, sometimes during a demo, you know, you, you, you are not even able to observe like an empty space in your path file or... Okay, let's see. Meanwhile, I'm also checking the, we call them the demo effect. Yeah, don't mind everything fine. Thanks, thanks for uh, for this, Anna and Stan's love. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, okay, okay. So looks like it generated, okay. I use the same path. So looks like, <laughs> okay. It recognized only, only this one, but because threshold was, I guess, zero 0.9. Okay, let's try again with 0, 03, and that's it for the current demo. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can prepare them. Maybe, maybe about uh, the Java code or about uh, using of, um, of of these models or of TensorFlow um, libraries. And we can collect them until uh, until the end of the second demo, and then we can discuss uh, more about that. Okay, let's give give it another 
Oh, okay. So with zero three confidence level, we oh, okay. That's that's a that's an issue here because, <laughs> yeah, the, the algorithm thinks that this is I don't know a number and it is quite kind of a two and something. I, I don't know what's that. It's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Anyway, it's just zero three, so we can fine tune that, of course, and uh, we can work with that further. Uh, okay, let's see next. Uh, where is the other screen? Okay, so I have prepared it uh, here, but it's on another. Okay, so it's on my MacBook. It's on my MacBook because of some Java versions I used different different of them. Didn't want to mess some things here for the demo on the same machine, and. Uh, Probably you notice that one of them is on Java 8, the other is on 11. So this is why. Okay, let me switch. Switch to this one. Uh, and maybe I can put it as full screen. Okay. Okay, so what do we have here? We have an app that is trying to do some face recognition, right? So I'm I use for that. Okay, let me go to Maven. I use for that uh dl okay dl 4j um okay so i use for that dl 4j native platform and core okay so let's go to the application now and see see the imports here okay and also let's go here and see uh, uh see the um, the, the libraries I use, so it's computation graph. It's, it's like quite similar as I used in uh, uh, TensorFlow, the graph one. And uh, okay, here in, in, in the app, I do not do many, like mm, too many things like in terms of logic. I, I'm just handling this building feature vectors. I'm starting an operation. I'm uh, I'm uh, ending and messaging that I'm um, ending that I'm scanning for some messages because I'm I'm going to add uh, paths to images like interactively. Uh, also, I'm waiting for an exit if I want to close the program. And uh, yeah, we'll get the label. In this case, label will be one of these names uh, which I potentially recognize. So here, I, for for this, I use like public images I found on the internet with with Brad Pitt. So we have an image. Okay, let me open it. We have an image with Brad Pitt, which I used to train the algorithm, and the other was to test it, right? So uh, maybe if you want to explore more about these concepts, I also prepared here. Okay. I also prepared here uh, a, a, a reference where you can read about training and uh, and test data and how you split them and how you optimally um, uh, use your data in order to get good results on that, right? So I'll include this in, in my references. Uh, I don't think we have time to um, go deeper into, into that now. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, the application I'm... Um, I'm presenting now is based on another one. Uh, if you just type MTCNN, which means multitask cascade convolutional networks, you will find a lot of GitHub repos. Uh, this one, for example, it's it's not the one I used. I don't know, probably I also visited this URL. The one I used is this one, which looks a bit um, <laughs> maybe strange here, but I actually took the model from here, not, not the whole application. So uh, you can find a lot of uh, a lot of them on GitHub, uh, DL4J, MCTNN. Usually, it's uh, the right uh, words you have to type in order to to find uh, these these models. Okay, let me go back to to the demo here. Quickly present the how face recognizer works. Okay, so I have an object here, MCTNN, right? I have some utils, some image utils uh what else what else and it's important i have a method which, which is called recognize faces and 
this recognized faces is it's applied on, on an image matrix which is uh okay let's see what's this this loader okay so this this loader is a native uh, image loader it's uh okay um uh oops not this one let me go back okay so i'm i'm taking that as an e and d array casting as a matrix and uh, taking my my input images or or uh, uh, the test or the train images and uh, and uh, describing them uh, as as matrices based passing them to um, to the detector faces method and yeah here i think it's maybe obvious uh i'm processing them and uh extracting some features okay and i mentioned uh at the beginning okay uh stan i see a question interesting from your side if tensorflow is machine learning or deep learning uh okay tensorflow it's actually a framework it's not um i mean the difference between and it, it's a good moment to answer that question that was uh, that why i was interrupted because i was going to say that anyway so deep learning is a subset of machine learning right and the difference between them mostly it's on uh, is that on deep learning we have we do not do like selection or extracting of the features with deep learning we just create some um, neural networks that that uh, do that for us so ne neural networks are uh, are uh, consisted of some networks of of course neurons but it's not like only I mean, similarly as in human brain the difference is that each net each each neuron is actually a function right it's a specialized function to do something for example a specialized function for us would be to check on this image let me quickly go back to to this image so a neuron would be a function that is checking if i have something here or not because i expect to have a tail there in that part of the image right so based on how many neurons or how many uh, functions i have and how i connect how i'm chaining them together i'm building a, a neural network and and then I don't need to extract or to do uh, to apply other other algorithms to extract or to uh, select my features uh, regarding the objects I'm trying to work with. And please keep in mind these features. You can think of them like like uh, attributes in in object oriented programming. So it's not uh, exactly the same thing, but I think it's uh, it's it's a quite decent analogy. Features are like attributes in this case. Okay, so here I'm I'm extracting um, uh, features using this this util. Okay, I know I'm out of time. Uh, extracting the features. Uh, okay, I'm calling it resize face because um, I'm not processing the whole image. Some uh, sometimes you can have uh, like a, a group of uh, persons there, and you want to recognize only only one of them, right? Uh, and also um, a useful method is that we try to get face features i mean to recognize the the attributes on on those um on the on those features right so we'll uh reply with some messages like there is no face recognized or um or uh, it, this is similarly with uh with with a specific person and let's see here um maybe we can I mean, if we still have, um, we'll see about that. If we have time, I can uh, also try with some pictures of yourself, for example, just to compare if it's recognizing you. But I already uh, tested with Brad Pitt, for example. So what I did, I used, sorry, this image to train. Usually, I mean, it's recommended to have like 300 images to, to train them. You will get better results, of course uh and then uh, this one it's the image to test i mean let, let's check if the, the logic is working fine the algorithm is working fine and based on that we will adjust i mean we'll auto adjust the, the sensitivity right okay and i think i have an image with brad Pitt somewhere somewhere here let me yeah i think this one so let's check if it's different indeed 
So this one, this one, and this one. Okay. So what we can do is to take, I think I also saved the path somewhere. Yeah. So we can take this one and put it. Oh, okay. Let me. Okay. Uh, let me build for the app. Let, let me compile it. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, you have here uh, this uh, these classes for for models. Uh, some of them I also um, I mean I I also borrowed from um, uh, from some uh, some GitHub uh, projects that are like um, part of libraries. Uh, of course, I adapted them, but uh, also added credits for them here. Uh, you will also usually do that. As well as you you do you, you in uh, in classic programming, you are taking some some parts of code and put them together and try uh, to work with them. But what's important is to understand what you are doing there and to um, to get your uh, um, to get your concept and put them in the right order. So Eric, where to get lecture materials? Thank you. I think Irina will be the one sending you everything, uh, all the um, all the references we have for today. So that's including that includes um the presentation the two um github repos and uh, also some uh, urls i uh, i presented to you with uh, with some articles i was working on in the past year okay okay so let's move to target okay and i think i have also the comment here trying to use this okay let me see if that's right yeah, it is. Okay. Oops. Uh, where is Brad Pitt? Okay. So I'm trying to pass, uh, I'm waiting to pass through test and train images. And then I will also input. Okay. Input image path. Okay. So let's take the input image path from here. Oops. Which is also Brad Pitt, uh, and this time we will get okay. Let's start analysis on that. We will get some results with okay, eighty percent level of confidence, seventy-five percent level of of confidence, and it recognized that it's Brad Pitt and it's not like Freddie Mercury, right? Okay, let, let's try another one with Freddie Mercury. I didn't try that, but uh, we can do it anyone. If you prefer Zelensky, maybe. Uh, okay, let's see what images do I have here. So I have this one. Oh, okay. So it, it is not trained for Mercury. I think it's risky. Probably it will not recognize. We lose time. But we have Arnold. Let's see. Okay, let's let's check a different image with Arnold. Okay, that's a good one. Hello, big guy. Okay, so let's take this. Uh, I will take my risk and rename it to JPEG. Okay, still recognize that. Let's go to change the path here and let's see if it's oh, it's recognizing Arnold. Okay, seventy percent similarity with, and it, it is based on on this image where he had different uh, age, right? I guess. I mean, even for, yeah, I don't know. Even for myself as a human agent, would be probably difficult. I would not say with seventy percent confidence that it's Arnold, but looks like a software is doing that. So we can usually um, use this as inputs, these uh, these numbers, and then uh, just create a, um, a small like web application where uh, you can you can provide maybe I don't know two pictures and let's see if uh, Irina looks like uh, Adriana here and uh, what's the level of uh, uh, compatibility or, or 
uh, how similar are are them and you, you can do that quite easy i put that together in about i about two hours or three hours maybe so it's not like a, a really performant software for that but if you explore more and uh, work on that like for two sprints for example i think you, you can you can have like quite strong applications and two sprints it's it's quite um uh like like small budget for that you, you can do uh nice things just using these uh these frameworks and libraries and i think also what's what's really important to emphasize is that i focused more on libraries we can use offline and most of them open source yeah so of course there are like open ai ten, even tensorflow it's it's a good framework you can work directly there you can write uh, python code uh they have their their own id for that but uh what we want as java developers or, or at least what i wanted on, on my projects i was working on uh, was to have something that i can pull from a maven um, repository and uh, play with that and then get some uh, some outputs create some api some work with some uh, like object oriented or um, uh with spring with um with um, rest apis and provide answers uh, provide the uh, responses to to a web client and then um like give it a shape like, like create a small startup in in just a few hours or a few days